Hello there and welcome to a new RimWorld gameplay series of mine. This is going to be the Rejects. We are going to play a colony full of people that have only negative traits. So this is kind of a roleplay run where our conduct is pretty simple. We are not going to pick up anybody who has anything positive going on for themselves. So the best people will be those that have only one trait and the worst will be these with three traits. So this is modded RimWorld and I have brought up a mod collection on Steam for all of you who are interested in what mods are running and there's also a handy button that you can just click if you want to use the same mod suite like I'm running here. As a word of introduction, I'm going very, very low weight here. Most of the mods are quality of life things like the mini map and uh, things that make the colonists less dumb. I have running a couple of biome mods, animal mods, stuff that makes the world more dangerous. I almost have nothing going on that makes the world easier for us. I think the only thing that I'm running is a gemstone mod, which it makes it easier to make valuable things. But apart from that, there is no extra weapons, there is no extra um, research things. Our research tree is, as you see here, very clean. I've made, I've did my best to keep this run as as close to the to the topic as possible while maintaining a a pleasant experience mod-wise. So, with that being said, let's get started. So, our starting crew here, we got Mike. The slothful, uh, no, the slobby, that's a uh, vanilla expanded trait. There, he's spreading trash, he hates people, and he wants drugs. So, he's also happening to be our major constructor, miner, and plants dude. He's also pretty good with uh, medical stuff, but for some reason, he hates fight firefighting. We got Walter, next uh, shelter child. He's uh, slothful, which makes him super slow, and he's also trashy. And we got Kalean. She's uh, a very social, talented person, but she's anxious, so uh, she uh, she's shying away from social situations. That's going to be fun. And she's also insomniac, which means she has a global work speed multiplier of 50. This is a horrible trait. This is one of the most horrible traits that I've ever seen before. But uh, her, the 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 upside of it is she's only going to sleep every three days or so, so she she's going to be up and around a lot. We are living on a uh, desert tile, and I'm running a mod which is enabling extra super interesting geological landforms, and this one is called Badlands. And as you see here, this is a very very uh, this is a very unpleasant place to live at. More about that in a second. Um, we are only surrounded by people that don't like us. So everybody hates us here. I've uh, oh, well, these dudes they they are neutral. Why are they neutral? Who are you actually? So uh, they are a Xeno human union. Ah, they are new newish. Uh, I've overlooked these. Okay, so these people don't hate us. They are the only people who are, who don't hate us. So we got a little bit of trade possibilities there, but uh, actually I was focusing more around that. We'll see what we do about that. These guys are freaks, so maybe they are okay. So roleplay wise, my idea is that we are running the rejects. So that means we are pretty much hating everybody who's uh, better than us. I leave it up to the story and also to the uh, audience what kind of uh, drift the story will take, whether we will be uh, benevolent people that are just doing their thing or if we're just raiding the world and cleansing everybody, cleansing the world from all these uh, better than thou people. I don't know, we're going to see about that. But now let's get the challenge up ahead of us. So Badlands, what is that? It's lots of stone. There's just stone literally almost everywhere. So uh, I checked out the fertile soil display and uh, we got a little bit of fertile soil up here. We got a few patches of fertile soil down there and a bit of it down there. So this is in terms of, of food stuff, a real nightmare. So uh, I really, really don't want to know how many problems we're going to have. So wildlife-wise, we got a few dromedaries, so we might get ourselves a uh, very early source of food. I don't know, maybe we'll tame them. But one thing's for sure, this place will be a fun and challenging experience, and I hope you guys will be with me on that. So since the majority of the uh, fertile soil is down here, I figured I want to start my my stuff here 
I got the the regular um, the regular crash land scenario going. So uh, we got we got a pretty uh, we got a pretty good start in terms of items. We we got food, we got weapons, we got a little bit of armor, we got uh, medical supplies. So we uh, we can survive for a couple of days. But uh, in all honesty, the situation here isn't is is really really not easy for us. So, oh yeah, I want to glance over the ideology that I built. So I considered, I wanted to play that guilty meme for once because they, these guys, they know that they suck. And uh, that comes with the uh, charity. So we, we like to help other people whose life sucks. I, I find that pretty understandable. And uh, these guys like to suffer pain. That's, that's really interesting. To um, my degree, I have made it so that they don't care about tainted or tattered stuff. And they don't care about death because, you know, goes with the theme. To counteract these bonuses, I said slow research because, you know, why not? I don't want to have it too easy. <laughs> and uh, last things, and then we can finally start building that base. We got, as the storyteller, I'm running with Randy on... Uh, blood and dust difficulty settings. The only thing I disabled was friendly fire. And uh, we, we have always healthy babies because, I don't know, I, I like it this way. Let's uh, just keep it like that. And I am also going to disable unwavering prisoners out of one simple reason. If I find a real reject out there, I don't want to be unable to recruit them, you know. I don't like that system too much in, in our situation here, you know. Okay, so enough of that. Let's get started. So the first real big challenge that I see here is we have really nothing to work with. There is no wood growing on this map any freaking where. That's quite disturbing. You know, that means we have to reserve a part of this map, well, sure, for tree growing. As soon as we've learned that. Oh, look at that. There's a bit of saguaro growing down there. So that's a good thing because we really, 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 really want to have whatever we can. So let's allow these pieces of steel. I mean, I could build with steel, I guess, but uh, that's something that I really want to avoid wherever I can. I think we're going to start and scrap this... Um... We're going to scrap that building or live in it. Uh, yeah, well, that's a really, really, really difficult thing to be. But I think the best idea that I got for now is we're going to dig ourselves a little bit of a cave in here and uh, live in that corner here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So mining is going to be important. Construction is going to be important. Hauling is going to be important. Mm, besides that, well, growing will be super important. So let's make it like that because uh, mining in, is important. But I think uh, I want to start sewing out stuff as fast as possible because we are also living quite high in the northern hemisphere. So this is desert, yes, but it's uh, by all means not a hot place. This place has only 30 uh, days of growing period. So that means hunger is going to be a, a thing for the rejects right away from day one. I don't really like this scenario because it's a quite challenging one. It's Especially since we're only playing with the worst of the worst. <laughs> okay, so um, I'd say we're going to start and uh, bring up a stockpile zone down here. So we're going to make sure that stuff is going to get transported down here. Okay, so let's see. My best shooter seems to be Kalean. She's the best person in that regard. They're starting to carry stuff down there, and while they're doing so, I will start plotting down the growing zones, and uh, we're, we're going to use every single freaking scrap here, you know? That's, uh, that's really, really important. I think I'm going to use that right away as well. So, let's see. We now got a couple of squares all dedicated to potatoes. Potatoes are, are what we're going to go for. Although I realized that uh, we got here, we got real soil here, you know? It's fertility 100%. This is uh, not even poor soil. Usually in the desert you have poor soil. Here we get lucky and so far, 
as we are getting real soil. So I might be actually, I might be actually considering to put up something else there. Okay, but whatever we're doing, we need a wall around this area ASAP because, you know, otherwise stuff inside there will deteriorate and I don't like to see that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm torn, you know. Partially, I want to have a uh, wall around that stuff as fast as possible, so I'm actually willing to build with steel. But on the other hand, I don't want to use my starting steel too eagerly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build that uh, stonecutter's table. So, 75 wood, eh? Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Because if there's one thing for sure, this place has a lot of stone around it so we're uh, we're quite safe in that regard so Kalean will get the bolt action rifle and uh, let's see is anybody here actually incapable of violence no all right so Mike is the second best shot and he sucks at melee whereas Walter is pretty okay with uh, melee and he already grabbed himself the breast stuff here uh, what's it called flak vest so pick up that plasteel knife mate and we are well somewhat prepared now okay so i'm keeping the game speed quite slow right now because i really really want to get that situation under control as quick as possible i think i'm going to let mike do his thing because you know um he he's quite fast with the skill level of eight and the faster we have those potatoes out, the faster we'll get some harvest in. So that's uh, very, very desirable. I think we don't need to adjust anything at the very moment. Not just yet. And uh, while there's uh, just stuff happening, let's see. We got a bit of compacted steel right around the corner. That's good. That means we have quick access to these things. Security will be the most problematic thing for us in the beginning because, you know, we got our fields very, very close to the map's borders. Oh, look at that. There's food lying around. So, naturally, the enemy could be just appearing right in our face while we're doing our field work. That's a pretty, pretty crappy uh, thing. And I really want to get these dromedary as it's in my possession. So, Walter is okay enough with animals. He's very passionate about it. We need a animal skill of what here? Brr. Animal. No, handling skill it's called, right? Minimum handling skill, one. So these are really, really docile. The downside is we don't have any plant material to feed them with, so... Taming is not an option right now. And I don't see any agaves that I could go for either. Damn, that's uh, that's a tragedy. Ooh, what's that? Dioptase. So we got some gemstones here. Good to know. And if you're wondering where I'm going to head with all that story, so the idea is uh, I want to build a uh, spaceship, and either they are going to escape from this planet, or they're going to shoot these uh, guys that are better than them just to another planet. Because I don't know, can we actually put prisoners into those cryptosleep caskets with a, with a uh, spaceship? I don't know. Literally, the idea here is to keep this colony alive with a bunch of rejects like that while trying to strive for the end game, you know? And I found, like, Spaceship is a good end game for these. I don't want to go Nobility because, I don't know, Nobility doesn't seem to be a, uh, a, a fitting thing to these. So, we got a Stonecutter's Table available. All right. So, now I've ha I, I have to make a decision. I think I'm going to go and uh, use my starting steel for that. I want that warehouse up and running as quick as possible. But as you see here, each of these walls is 80 steel. So we're uh, we're actually investing quite a lot, right? It's uh, 75 on these, other, on these but uh, you get the idea. So uh, all in all, this is a very, very costly project. But I think it's totally worth it because our, our possessions will be protected. And carving out stone blocks is possible already, sure. But it's a lot of material that... Uh, no, it's a lot of time that we will require for that. So I'm not too happy to do that. So next thing we're going to do... 
I'm going to carve a little bit of cave in here, or do we not? Shouldn't we? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? We're we're going to make uh, we're going to make it like that for starters. Yeah, I like the idea of that. So uh, them dudes are going to have their uh, their their men and women caves. <laughs> so, but I think uh, the first night we're going to sleep outdoorsies because I uh, I really don't want to interrupt Mike while he's chilling out and while he's planting out the stuff, you know. I, I emphasized that already enough, I think. So none of the other folks are really good at mining. I mean, Walter literally sucks at it, but he's uh, he also seems to have nothing to do. So yeah, well, he's pretty good at other stuff. We could send him sciencing at some point, but no. We're going to enable a mining work on Walter, so he's going to be able to just do something useful with his time, you know? Except for maybe consuming a packaged survival meal. You do you. Alrighty. Yeah, it's, uh, it's dinner time, and they hate the fact that they have to eat without tables yet, but uh, we gotta work on some accommodations soon. Promises. I promise this. So, let's... Well, considering that we're uh, seeing just the start of this, I feel like I'm, I'm doing a quite good job getting things organized fast. Oh yeah, um, while, while we're plowing away here, I also gave this ideologian here a couple of habits, so uh, we got we got a uh, we got a ritual of of symbol burning. We're going to build. We're going to burn the doomsday effigy. Okay, that's maybe not the right fully name, but uh, celebration of shame sounds fun. And I, I I went for venerated animals, raccoons and rats, because that's literally the animals nobody likes. And I felt like that's a very fitting thing, like a totem animal to, to these people. And uh, yeah, I think raccoons will be hard to acquire. Don't know if they'll ever migrate to this tile naturally. I highly doubt it, honestly, but uh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to see. Okay, so um, yeah, was that love interest? Walter charmed Helen by subtly complimenting her family background. She gave a minimal response. Okay, so this woman is really, really slow. They didn't promise me too much when uh, when that, that's sick, you know. She's really, really uh, getting things done super, super slowly. They're sleeping outside, and I, I bet they generate a lot of negative thoughts because of that. And by the way, I've already uh, making sure that they come with a permanent negative mood. So, you know, I did what I could to make these people as grumpy and unlikable as possible. So, um, yeah. I mean, the biggest problem, I think, will be making this place grow. Because... Um, we are completely not allowed to um, to just pick up anybody. So every every person that's uh, that's really negative or, or bad or a real reject, you know, <laughs> is going to be really really desirable. Alrighty, so uh, Walter is already busy cleaning. So that means. Um, we're going to assign him to mining now. He's going to get uh, his experience painfully slow. He's not only he's not only knowing what he's doing. He's also slothful. So he's extra slow while doing so. He's he's basically he basically doesn't know what he's doing. He's loathing it, and he's not really willing to put it back into it. That's uh, that's Walter Butler. So and I think uh, there's a cat running loose up there. I think the cat just went through our paintings. Oh, damn. Alrighty, so... Let's see. Yeah, things, things are just getting done in a tempo as I had expected. The only real surprise to me is that Mike is getting his stuff done so freaking fast. So Kalian is now free for other business as well. And I think... Given the fact that we are 
that we really require our our humble abode to be carved out of the mountain, we're going to assign her to mining too. Yeah, they both suck at that job. I know, it's, it's, it's kind of a pity looking at them while they're doing what they're doing, but you know, I just don't want to waste any of my other precious materials. We could just carve stone blocks at this point though. I think this would be even faster. Tell you what, we're actually going to do that. Considering what I'm seeing here, we're uh, we're better off when we're uh, when we're doing it uh, otherwise. So, next step, let's bring up some beds because these poor suckers they really need some place to sleep in. And even if it's an outdoorsy's bed, but uh, let's continue with the stone cutting thing. So I need a zone for that. You know, there's always a zone for stone cutting in my colonies. We're going to put it down here and let's clear everything. And we're going to allow chunks and stone blocks. And we're also going to allow steel because steel doesn't deteriorate outside. All right, so that's going to work on out perfectly. And we're going to configure this little guy here. And uh, let's see, make any stone blocks and can I link this thing to a certain stockpile? I don't think so. We're going to reduce the ingredient radius accordingly. And uh, yeah, we're just going to make any stone blocks and you do that forever. So Walter is going to get an assignment to crafting now. There we go. This is just, uh, this just hurts while I'm looking at what they're doing, you know? And I think carving out a couple of uh, stone blocks will be so much faster than than trying to do this with the uh, people that don't even know what they're doing. Mike will be there. Mike will be doing his thing. So, uh, Kalean takes a lot of time with meditating, I do notice. So, let's wake up the, the outside sleepers. Luckily, your uh, your colonists usually forgive you the problem, the, these things. All right, I don't want Kalyan to mine. Let's see what we can't do with her workforce. She is an adept constructor after all, and uh, yeah. So we are terribly out of wood already. That was very foreseeable. So I want to have power generation up and running ASAP. So we're going to set on up ourselves a wind turbine here because um, the thing is, I, I think the real hope of this place must lie ultimately in um, hydroponics because judging from what I'm seeing here, we will have super hard time in, in trying to get ourselves uh, a sustainable food income from these things. I'm so afraid that these uh, damn dromedaries will migrate out of town before I'm able to kill them or tame them. I mean, taming is a thing we are not really... We don't really have an area where I would be able to put up a decent pen and pasture. So, not really an option. I just want to tame them primarily to slaughter them later. But uh, we'll see about that. Until then, let's build up the wind turbines so we got ourselves a uh, early income of power and Kalean's workforce is not uh, totally idle here. Meanwhile, Mike is doing his best to get his uh, stuff done. Luckily, slowness is none of his sins. So we got seven days worth of food here left in the, in the bank, so let's work with that. Okay. Stone blocks are finally being made, so that means we are acquire, acquiring work, um, material to work with here at an acceptable pace. So let's see. Once the fields have been uh, prepared, I bet that Mike will have the uh, rooms here carved out on no time. And I think I've just decided that I'm going to wait with the bedrooms for these three up until this very moment. Even if it might be a little bit uh, uncomfortable for them, mm, I got more pressing matters, like putting up a, a freezer, something to to make our, our food non-perishable. 
but the best way to do that would be to research batteries. So let's get started with that. And that's requiring a research bench. So if we make that out of wood, we are already no longer capable of doing so. We're going to make that thing happen out of granite. So we're going to put up a put up these stone blocks to a really, really good use. Kaleon happens to be a top-notch researcher. So she's going to be exactly the person that we require for that job. Meanwhile, Walter is putting resources in there. This is all just happening because of mods. Standard vanilla um, colonists aren't that smart. I love it that they do this. Like, there's uh, not much time lost here. So, meanwhile, Mike is almost done with this job. I think these fields should be really enough food for these three. Even for more people than that, if we'd had to have some some guests or or whatever you know okay so walter seems to be out of work i i don't i don't agree with him so he she should go and uh, keep the stone cutting going right now i'm doing a lot of micromanagement here primarily because i know that we are kind of like working on a clock here so worst part worst thing about building with stone is that it amps up the amount of work units tremendously if we'd be building that with steel or or wood we'd be already done with six of these tables probably but uh, stone takes time but on the bright side it also grinds up the construction skill of the person quite decently because you know they do quite a lot and here goes mike so that's what I was uh, hoping for. Let's see, so we're going to chop those saguaro, and I think it's going to be really important for this colony to learn about uh, planting trees also quite, quite quickly, because we got not too much fertile soil, and my long-term plan would be like going to, no visitors, um, going to have my food produced in hydroponics and using that little fertile soil that I got for uh, tree farms because that has two advantages. First off, you don't visit the tree farm all too often. You don't need to go and work there all day, uh, all too often, once it's set up that is. So the risk from being on the map's edge is a little bit reduced, but uh, well, it's more about reliability. I really want to have a reliable income of, uh, of food here. Okay. So far, things are looking quite decently. It's uh, the third day, I think. Yeah. And uh, we're churning out the rooms here. Uh, Mike is uh, not willing to go to his bed, whatever that is, so. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of visitors. So Kalean, with all your anxiousness, please go and trade with these people here. So let's see what they got from what, what they got for us, so. They've got some food. We're going to buy that food. No second, uh, no no questions asked, because really we need that stuff. We got enough silver to facilitate the trade, so we're going to buy those uh, four rations. It ain't much, sure, but uh, considering the situation, I think it's not the worst idea. So battery research, that's going to be the first thing that I really want to have, because once we got access to batteries, Building a freezer is going to be super easy, and uh, three dromedaries should be really a good opportunity for us to uh, to get uh, to get us going for a while. So, the pollution gang pirates are attacking us. A uh, naked no, it's not not a naked guy named Hodge. It's a uh, it's not uh, it's a waster. And she's high on psychotropic fungus. So, uh, well, it's going to be quite fun to watch these dudes here. They got a uh, water pistol and steel knife. So I bet that, uh, yeah, their, their paths will cross. Let's watch that. I love it when Randy puts up something that Randy takes care of immediately. That's the best Randy. So let's go. Bam. No raider can resist the... Uh, the charm of uh, backstabbing some visitors out on the open. So what is the what is the benefit out of that? So we got some gear on that, just a plain leather t-shirt, which has almost no value. Poor quality steel knife, so nah. 
Not much benefit, but Kalean is doing the science. That's that's so good. Once we got batteries, I think we're uh, we're going to be in a much much better position position because food doesn't expire then anymore. It's right now possibly the worst thing that could happen to us: starvation. So let's bring up a, a little bit of an expansion to the uh, warehouse here. I don't want to build a uh, too large freezer here. We're going to build something something modest, something small. Here we go. And once these rooms have been dug out, I will be I will be relocating the beds and uh, let's see how we're going to continue with that. Probably these will be the prison cells after all and uh, we're going to move into real apartments rather sooner than later. Could be very, very much so. Because now that I look at it, we, uh, you know, we got so many other things already done that I don't have the feeling that I need these caves too much. But these caves will make really, really decent prisons when the time has come. So, my friends, I thank you for watching. This is the end of episode one. I hope you enjoyed yourselves as much as I did. And this project will be a really, really exciting experience and uh, I hope you're going to be joining the ride with me so feel free to drop me your comments down below let me know how you you would wish to for the series to develop I'm open for input I'm always eager to know what you guys are thinking and also leave a thumbs up on this episode this helps so much to make it more visible for other people consider subscribing this helps the channel enormously and if you have hit that bell thing you'll get notified whenever something new hits town and in the description box like i said there is a link to the mod pack so if you want to check out which mods are running there steam collection is there for you so have a wonderful day thanks for watching and i'd be really 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 delighted if you'd also give those support links a look there's patreon paypal and buy me a coffee as always and means to support this channel i don't have any big sponsorships or anything behind me this is a mostly community driven thing and i appreciate all the help that i got and i appreciate all the help that's coming so why either you whether or not you'll be clicking these links i really really don't mind i thank you so much for watching this ad roll this means a lot to me because that means you're still hanging around here and uh that's quite amazing and awesome of you thanks for that and have a wonderful day